and liberty and justice for all. Everyone please mind standing for one minute for a moment of silence for our veterans and people in need. Thank you very much. I want my sitting down. <coughs> Get a roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Alpert? Present. Trustee Corgan? Present. Trustee Solomon? Present. And Trustee Hagen? Present. Mayor Curley, present. Uh, we have upcoming, upcoming meetings. A regular meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 6, 2022, at 7 p.m. A workshop meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 27, 2022, at 7 p.m. Um, and it's. Uh, at 7.02, we're going to have a public hearing in reference to the New York State DEC MS4 uh, report. So I'd like uh, Charles just to give us a little, um, well, let me let me make a motion to open the public hearing, please. Can I have a motion to open the public hearing, please? Trustee Corrigan. Motion made by Trustee Corrigan. Second, Second please. Second, Trustee Albert. Second made by Trustee Albert. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, Charles, you'd like to come up and... Explain that too, please. Good evening. The MS4 is the Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System, which is a uh, US EPA program regulated by New York State DEC. An annual report is submitted to the New York State DEC on June 1st of each year. The MS4 Storm Water Program has six elements called minimum control measures which result in reduction of pollution discard uh, pollution dis discharge into water bodies <clears throat> these six elements are uh, public education outreach public participation and involvement illicit discharge detection and elimination construction site stormwater runoff control, post-construction stormwater management, and stormwater management for municipal operations. The Village of Suffern is a member of the Stormwater Consortium of Rockland County. Uh, the Stormwater Consortium has partnered with Cornell Cooperative Extension for education and outreach requirements such as education, educational classes and radio programs discussing various public service announcement topics. Okay, just to simplify a little bit, Charles, and you can help me with this. For years, I've, I've heard people talk about the MS, the MS, uh, the MS4. The actual four stands for the word separate, the word storm, the word sewer, and system. And um, you know, outside your houses, you have you know different water drains that, that go places that go into that may go into streams. Correct, Charles? Yes. So what it does is we're required to test so many of those uh, where it, where it comes out where it comes out to make sure it's safe that we're not polluting water. If someone's putting oil down uh, down their drains and stuff like that, so we're required to do uh, twenty percent per year to check this. Correct, Charles? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, essentially a, um, a visual inspection. They call it a uh, outfall out reconnaissance. Right, and this year you you inspected more than 20%, correct? Yeah, we, yeah, we um, this year we did just over, uh, we did eight, which is uh, just over 20%. Last year we did about the same year. Year prior we did all of the, uh, the outfalls. So um, the requirement, as you had mentioned, is 20% or to have all of them inspected within a five-year period. Right, and, and next year they expect to get tougher on the requirements. So it's just another safety measure that's out there. I, I just try to make it a little simpler because I've heard certain things for years that I didn't fully understand myself. So well, thank you, Charles, on that. Uh, what, I, what I'd like to do now is I, I'd like to have a, a, a consent agenda to adopt the following resolutions. Do you want to close the public hearing? Oh, yes. I'd like to adopt yeah. the resolution. Anybody have any comments on that? Good comments. Good question. Yes. Charles, did you do eight, you said? Eight. And how many did you find a problem with? Uh, 
Okay, thanks. And there's, a, there's an actual full report that actually goes to the state of multiple pages of the inspections and how they did it and what they did. Uh, anyone else have any comments? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. <clears throat> Trustee Corrigan. Can I get a second, please? Second. Second, Trustee, Trustee Salvin. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Okay, can I, uh, I guess we'll have, can I have a, a resolution to approve the MS4 annual report that we can submit it to the state by June? Can I get a motion on that, please? Trustee Corrigan. Trustee Corrigan, made a motion. Second? Trustee Hagen. Second, Trustee Hagen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Now I'd like to do a consent agenda to adopt the following resolutions. Items 4B through 5C, items 9A to 9H, items 10A to 10C, and items 11C and 11D. Um, can I please have a motion to, to adopt those? That, uh, those consent item agendas, the resolution. Trustee Corrigan. Motion made by <coughs> Trustee Second. Corrigan. Trustee Salvin. Seconded by Trustee Solomon. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Uh, now we'd like to, uh, the attorney? Yes, good evening, everyone. Uh, the only item that I have that uh, we need to talk about is something that we'll discuss in executive <coughs> session when we get to the end of the agenda and move to go into executive session. In case anyone's not familiar, Terry Rice has been the attorney here for many, many years, for way back. He he wasn't here for years, and he's been back here now, and, uh, and I, I do an exceptional job. He's one of the most renowned people in land use in the state of New York, and I'm proud to have him. Huh? And I was village attorney since I was 13. <laughs> 13. <laughs> 20, 20 years now. <laughs> yeah, 20 years. Um, Congratulations, Terry. <laughs> so let's go. I guess now we'll go to the police department. I understand. Then we have some awards to hand out, Chief Lachlan. If there's anything you want to mention on update at all for any events we have. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I gave the board my update during the last workshop meeting, so it's acceptable to everyone. I'll just move on to our awards. Uh, I don't really have anything further to update the board on other than what was uh, said in the workshop. Um, so, uh, as you know, and so the public knows, National Police Week is this month, May 11th through the 17th. So in recognition of Police Week, I'd like to recognize some of our officers that have gone above and beyond in the performance of their duties. Our first award is going to be a unit citation, which is awarded to a unit within the department that best exemplifies devotion to duty and brings a claim to the unit and the department. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call up Detective Sergeant Marsh, Sergeant Samora, Detective York, Detective Coroletta, and Police Officer Wynn. On the evening of August 4th, 2021, a resident of Riverside Drive contacted the cell phone police department and advised us that her house had been burglarized. Sergeant Samora, Detective York, Police Officer Corletta, I'm sorry, Detective Corletta, and Police Officer Wynn responded to the scene. The responding officers began an extensive video canvas that went late into the night, eventually developing a suspect vehicle. Further coordination with the Mawa Police Department's Detective Bureau, Detective York was able to obtain a license plate from the sus for the suspect vehicle. Further investigation and interviews by Police Officer Coroletta at a local consignment shop revealed the name of the suspect. The following tour of duty, Sergeant Samora and Police Officer Wynn were on patrol and observed the suspect vehicle operating on Lafayette Avenue. The vehicle was then located on occupied on Bridge Street. <clears throat> a perimeter was established around Bridge Street with Detective Sergeant Marsh and Detective York maintaining surveillance on the vehicle. A short time later, the vehicle left the Bridge Street residence where a traffic stop was conducted on the suspect and her vehicle. A search of her vehicle yielded the proceeds of the burglary. 
Additionally, proceeds from a second burglary that occurred one week earlier were located in this vehicle. The keen observations and relentless investigative efforts by the above officers reflect great credit upon themselves and the Suffern Police Department. Therefore, I hereby recognize the collective efforts of Detective Sergeant Richard March, Sergeant William Samora, Detective Andrew York, and Detective Michael Coroletta, and Police Officer Daniel Wynn by awarding them with a certificate of re recognition in the grade of unit citation for their actions and efforts during this investigation. say congratulations from all the board but but if I may mention something else Mr. York Andrew how you doing one second just to let uh, everyone know here we had a, a, a gentleman pass away this week his uh, it was actually Detective York's father oh you know he was from he was from the area he actually lived in Slotesburg all right he was uh, he was a very liked man and and greatly respected you know and I had the pleasure of knowing him and I just want to send my condolences from this whole village to you and your family all right and until we meet him in heaven God bless thank you all right that's it <coughs> thank you mayor our second award tonight is also going to be a unit citation at this time, I would like to call up Sergeant Justine, Sergeant Kiernan, Sergeant Figueroa, Detective York, Officer Michael Careswell, Officer Adams, Officer Coroletta, Officer Barry, Officer Wynn, Officer DeLuca, Dispatcher Conklin, and Dispatcher Wolf. <laughs> It's like half the department. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Easily. They're that good. <laughs> Kathy's going to need to stand over in court. <laughs> <laughs> on December 4th, 2021, the department received a report of a pedestrian struck by a motor vehicle on Orange Avenue. This incident occurred immediately following the Christmas parade in the downtown area. Officers quickly responded to the scene and began administering aid to the injured parties. During the preliminary investigation, it was discovered that the driver operating the vehicle that struck the pedestrians had fled the scene. During the on-scene accident investigation, officers were able to locate a mirror from the suspect's vehicle under a separate parked vehicle. This mirror was a piece of evidence that was crucial in providing a lead for the suspect vehicle. Officers on scene were able to canvas several businesses for video surveillance of the incident. 
A full and detailed accident reconstruction was conducted by Officer Witte, and over the course of the next several days, a variety of different officers canvassed additional streets, houses, and businesses for any information regarding this vehicle. Eventually, a suspect vehicle was located, the driver was identified, gave a full confession, and an arrest was made. This case was resolved by members of the department working diligently and collectively to reach a successful conclusion. So at this time, I hereby recognize the collective efforts of Sergeant Justine, Sergeant Kiernan, Sergeant Figueroa, Detective York, Police Officer Mike Carswell, Officer Adams, Officer Corletta, <coughs> Officer Barry, Officer Wynn, Officer DeLuca, Dispatcher Conklin, and Dispatcher Wolf by awarding them with a certificate of recognition and the grade of unit citation for their actions and efforts during this investigation. Excellent police service. This award is awarded to any member of the department who, in the line of duty, performs an act that brings a claim to themselves or the department. At this time, I'd like to call up Detective Sergeant Marsh, Detective York, and P.O. Varis. On the morning of July 3rd, 2021, a victim walked into the Suffern Police Department headquarters and reported that he was asleep under the New York State Thruway overpass when he was violently attacked by a perpetrator with a knife. The victim suffered a severe stab wound. While speaking with the victim, police officer Varis ascertained that after being stabbed, the perpetrator forcibly removed the victim's shoes from his feet. Police officer Varis began rendering medical attention to the victim and requested the detective bureau to respond to the station. The victim was immediately transported to Nyack Hospital by Roundpo Valley Ambulance Corps for treatment of the stab wound. Upon removal of the victim to the hospital, Detective Sergeant Marsh, Detective York, and Police Officer Varis responded to the New York State Thruway overpass on Orange Avenue. The responding officers, not knowing if the suspect was still armed with the knife, confronted the perpetrator and took him into custody without incident. 
The swift actions of Detective Sergeant Marsh, Detective York, and Police Officer Varis reflect a great credit upon themselves and the Suffolk Police Department. Therefore, at this time, I hereby recognize the collective efforts of Detective Sergeant Richard Marsh, Detective Andrew York, and Police Officer Julio Varis by rewarding them with a certificate of recognition in the grade of, I'm sorry, in the grade of excellent police service for their actions that morning. No laughing, guys. Our next award is going to be a unit citation. Uh, Detective Sergeant Marsh and Detective York, don't go too far. <laughs> You're going to have to redecorate the house. <laughs> In February of 2021, the department received a complaint of a sexual assault of a minor. Detective Sergeant Marsh and Detective York began to work on interviewing the victim and their family members to try and develop a suspect. A suspect was developed and identified, and by using multiple investigative methods, which included video surveillance, license plate reader inquiries, physical surveillance, and multi-agency cooperation. After further investigation, the detectives were able to locate the suspect in New Jersey, where they obtained a full confession from him. The suspect was arrested and extradited to New York State. In September of 2021, the suspect pled guilty to a felony offense. Therefore, I hereby recognize the collective efforts of Detective Sergeant Marsh and Detective York by awarding them with a certificate of recognition and the grade of unit citation for their actions and efforts during this investigation. Our last award of the night is an honorable service award. Detective Sergeant Marsh, if you have to show up here. This award is awarded for a credible act in the line of duty showing initiative and accomplishment. Maybe not. Acting on, a new, on newly developed information, Detective Sergeant Marsh reopened a cold case and investigated the disappearance of a female party that was reported missing to this agency in April of 1992. Mm. Through Detective Sergeant Marsh's coordination with the New York City Medical Examiner's Office, the body of an unidentified woman was exhumed and a DNA profile was collected and examined. The DNA proved to be a match for the missing reported for the reported missing person. Through Detective Sergeant Marsh's efforts, he was able to provide closure to a family that had been missing their loved one for nearly 30 years. Wow. Therefore, I hereby recognize Detective Sergeant Marsh for his hard work and dedication in bringing this 30-year-old case to its conclusion by awarding him this, certific this certificate of recognition and the grade of honorable service. I'm 
That's all I have for our presentation tonight. I would just like to thank the board for their continuing support of the police department and the men and women that work for us. Thank you. Thank you for everything everybody does. It's wonderful. Thank you. I just want to uh, thank the police department in insisting the, we had, we had a fire recently on Riverside Drive and, and, and the fire department did a fabulous job and, and the police came and did their job with traffic and invest, guess, investigating the fire. And it was an accidental fire. No, no one was hurt. The Red Cross came. We took care of all the people there. It's, it's you know, but what we do as a community together, and I just want to—I want to make sure that you know, Chief thanks everyone for doing their job on that, and also the fire department, the young firefighters, and and the older ones who watch the young firefighters go in the building. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, we're gonna do the grant program, Fred. You have uh, any updates? I hope you got money for us, Fred. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. We ski fire department. Ow. I don't know if they are going to Fred, you can wait a second, right? Wait a minute. And I thought everyone came for me. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> and then there's three. So <laughs> sad. So sad. But this I can use that. Thank you, Fred. Good evening, board. Hello, Fred. Uh, some great accomplishments there. We're very lucky to have those officers in the yes. police department. Um, I want to talk about just one item tonight, and that was basically that we were awarded a grant uh, this past couple of weeks ago uh, in the amount of $319,680. Fred, one minute. Sorry. Go ahead, Fred. Just speak up a little bit. I can't have trouble hearing you. Okay. Uh, we were awarded a grant uh, over the past couple of weeks in the amount of $319,680 for a uh, water filtration system to help eliminate PFOAs and PF PFOSs from the water system. Uh, what we're basically doing is we're taking a dormant filtration system that we had in place between 1990 and 95, which um, was to remove certain particulates, and those particulates were eliminated from the water, and it was no longer necessary, thus the system went dormant. Now new regulations have come into play, and we have to uh, uh, re, re uh, start up the system, okay? We do have to do some uh, changes to it, and the cost of that is going to be approximately $532,800. The grant is for 60% of that. Um, this is the Water Infrastructure Improvement Act money. Uh, once again, through the EFC, um, I do want to thank Michael Benito, Charles Wiki, and um, <clears throat> and uh, for helping out with this grant. And the I think our engineers were very good too in that, right? Excuse me, Pataro and Doge, they were very good too, weren't they? Didn't they help us with this grant? Pataro and Doge. You know what I'm talking about? They, they helped us. Oh, oh, they did the yes. Yes, they yeah. did the yes. They, they did. They were good. Right. So. Um, Yes, that, that's that's basically that's basically it. And, and I would just want to point out that Suffern was the only village or town, the only municipality in the whole county to get any money in these grants. No one else got one but Suffern. Okay. Thank you, Fred. And Mike and Charles and yes. Joe. Thank you. And you guys. <laughs> Do you want to get a picture? <laughs> Fred, you want Ma a picture, Mike? Mayor. Did we skip talking about you? No. Fred would like a picture. What? Fred okay, Fred, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you take a picture yourself, send it to me, all right? Okay, all right. you're not holding up my meeting, Fred. Okay, okay culture and recreation. <laughs> Take a, take a picture of Fred later and send it to me, will you? <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I'd like to start off by saying Saturday was absolutely phenomenal. The village really shined uh, between Keep Rock and Beautiful, not just Battery Saturday, Arbor Day, and the PD Drug Take Back Day. Mm -hmm. The village was streaming with people and happiness, and the environment was saved and saving, and it was just a great day. So I thank the board. I thank everybody here that was part of it. I thank the residents that came out it really was a fantastic day so kudos to the board for letting everything happen for that 
Uh, the next thing that we have, story time, we're going to have at the gazebo. We did try to do it this morning, and the weather unfortunately didn't allow us, but every, mor every Monday morning at 11 a.m. at the gazebo, we're going to have story time with Miss Jennifer from the Suffern Library, so it's always a nice um, hour for the families to come out, listen to a story, have a snack on the, on the lawn, and we're looking forward to starting that again next Monday. Uh, Clifford Theater, we're looking for uh, dates for auditions. The show has been revealed. It's going to be the show called Dreamland. Our uh, director, Anthony, is very excited to come back and get the, uh, the season going, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, our next nutrition workshop is going to be May 11th over at the community center at 11 a.m. Uh, let's see. Our big event at the end of this month will be the Memorial Day Parade. And the Memorial Day Parade will be on Monday the 30th, which is actually Memorial Day. We're looking forward to having that here in the village. Uh, we have the high school band will be coming. We've got a lot of veterans that we've already talked to, so it's going to be an, an amazing day. Uh, and then going into June, we have yoga in the park starting on Monday evenings uh, at 6.30. So anyone that's up and willing and able to do yoga in the park, we invite you out. And then Taste of Suffern from the Lions Club will be at the Community Center on June 7th. And I think that's it for now. Thank you very much, Kathy. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I just want to point out, I see Joe Hunt and Pat Karate, also known as Topper. <laughs> the, um, they were there for that battery Saturday, volunteering their time with their other union members, and they were there for hours, and they're lifting heavy stuff. And it was, uh, I, I, we appreciate that as a community. The community appreciates all that, all the paints we got and all the computers that they wanted to get rid of, and, uh, and you volunteer time, and I, and I appreciate that from you guys, okay? And the rest of the guys that were there, too, if I don't, I'm sorry I don't have their names written down here. I apologize, all right? Thank you for that. And, uh, thank, thank you. Right. And, I, thank you. And, and just with the Keep Rockin' Beautiful, there was over 200 volunteers on that, right? For suffering? Yeah. Yeah, we had over 200. Joe Corgan was uh, yeah. my pilot, my co pilot that day. We went around to different locations. I learned what a Kirby is. <laughs> <laughs> we had Kirby Hidden, which was the mascot for Keep Rockin' Beautiful. Kids found it. They were able to get prizes, so they really got them engaged in the afternoon. Um, again, with the fire department donating their time to Harmony Park, DBW. W, the massive amount of help yeah. from them. It really, it was just a wonderful day. Arbor Day, we were able to do a tree, right. uh, two trees, with the um, the Boy Scouts and the tree committee. So it was just all over. It was yeah. really and all, and all the community volunteers that came out, just residents that came yeah. out and, and, and the Boy Scouts that came out, a lot of people. And it's great yeah, really, to see that. Because people care. They, yeah. they care around yeah. here. And I, and I personally thank them as the board does. Thank, thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Public, it's public comment time. I'd like to have a a, uh, a motion to open up public comment. Trustee oh, Corgan. Oh, you got it. Okay. Second, Trustee Alpert. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Public comment. How you doing, Mr. Giantino? Jim Giantino to Memorial. I'll direct this to Terry. Uh, down at the street fair, which was wonderful. A few people asked me, how come they're selling liquor and they're drinking liquor at the street fair? Is that a violation, Terry? I don't know what the facts are. I mean, they're, they're, they're Well, there was a couple of vendors. I think they were giving out bourbon. I didn't, Jim, I didn't hear about this. I apologize. I don't know if no, you can't hear about did, everything. Yeah, did you? Know? Did you uh, I'd like to ask the chief. You want to see? Did you see anyone serving alcohol? Oh yeah. Which that know. didn't concern me, but they could have opened up the bottles and been drinking down there. And I luckily, nothing went wrong. I, I, I agree with you 100%. That shouldn't happen. I'm, I'm disappointed I didn't hear about it, to tell you the truth, Jim. Huh? We, we have in the agreement with the Chamber of Commerce that uh, they and all of the individual vendors are required to comply with all 
laws, ordinances, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if they're violating the state liquor authority uh, laws, number one, it's a violation of statute. Number two, it's a violation of the agreement that we have with the Chamber of Commerce. My concern is probably no one even checked. You know, no, maybe they weren't even aware that these people were going to hand this stuff out. Where, where, where were they located? Oh, there was a couple of places. They should have been stopped. Huh? I'm disappointed. They should have been stopped, Jim. I appreciate you telling me this. I, well, I walked up. You know, I we learned from our mistakes, so yeah, they let them know what went on. And I mean, if if they're legit, they're legit. But I don't think they're supposed to be drinking. They may be able to sell if they have a, a, a liquor license. I, I don't even. I don't, I don't, I don't think, think were they know selling the bottles know there? Because I know at the farmers market they weren't allowed to sell the bottles of wine that day. They had to send it to your home. Okay, right, you Bruce? bought it and they shipped it. I don't remember the rules yeah, for the, I don't remember for the farmer's the market, but there used to be a wine person there. Right. Yeah, and they must have shipped it to your house. Yeah, I right. think so. Yeah. All right. You know, right, Frank? Send it to Just look into right. it. You know, what, what we've uh, done, and, and it, it's kind of an offshoot, um, for years and years the Chamber of Commerce operated without any issues. They were issued a permit. Uh, the insurance carriers lately have said that they're, because obviously we demand that the village be named yeah, as an additional everything. named insurance. The insurance carriers have put on the certificate that uh, we're an additional named insured if uh, required, if insurance is required by virtue of, a, of an agreement. So lo and behold, this year I wrote a long agreement, um, and part of it was that, you know, they, they, as I mentioned before, that they have to uh, abide by all laws, uh, etc. Um, I think it's good to know because I think at this point we need to, to additionally put in and the, the, the agreement kind of dragged on and, and um, you know we have more information now I think I, we should put in the agreement that um, you know there will no, be no alcohol sales unless uh, um, it's approved and they, they have licenses I mean for example when we say they have to comply with all laws regulations etc if someone's selling food that means they got to get approval of the Department of Health right it, it's implicit in our agreement that they certainly have to get approval from the, the, the SLA if they're going to be selling liquor I frankly don't know offhand if giving it out is uh, a violation I would assume it is um, but I think that's something we can look forward to uh, putting in future agreements just to make sure that the chamber in advance polices the the vendors so we don't run into an issue you mean I stumped you, Terry? I'm sorry? <laughs> I stumped you? You don't know? <laughs> no, I, I know the law. I actually know the law in this, Jim. The law is that it's not a liquor authority problem. It's not a liquor authority problem. It's actually a police department problem. Okay. And that's why I'm disappointed I didn't know about this, that there was given at liquor out. And I'm glad you pointed this out. And I, I'm, not, I'm not happy to no, hear this from I you. I wasn't Thank happy, you. And, and the people that spoke to me weren't happy. No, I'm, not, I'm not happy at all right now. Very disappointed. Uh, another thing, and I know this has been a sore thing when I was mayor and even before that, there's probably hundreds of dogs. And I love dogs, but I don't think that place, I mean, they're, they're running into each other and they're growling at them. They could be the calmest dogs, but you know when dogs get together, sometimes they don't get along. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know how you're going to police that. It's right. not easy, but it's something. Maybe you should put that in with the Chamber of Commerce regulations. Well, there wasn't there wasn't much. This is the first year actually there was a contract between the Chamber of Commerce and the village. Yeah, it was never went by one. past practice all these years. Yeah, but there was never one. There was never one in place, and that's why I, when well, Terry read it and he told me we we made sure they signed the contract and I signed right. the contract on the other side. Number one, number two is I looked into other street fairs. The Nyack Street Fair pays the, the municipality all the money due. In other words, if it costs 6000 the Nyack Street Fair pays the municipality 6000 For years and years, we've been collecting 2000 for the street fair while they made multiple thousands of dollars. I sat down with them. I negotiated up to 3000 for this fair, and I negotiated up to 4000 for the next fair because I don't think the taxpayers should be paying that hefty of a bill based on different overtime things that we have okay and we will we will and you're uh, absolutely right mike but because i had them pay our expenses when i was mayor 
Yes. Whatever, yeah. just what the expenses are. We weren't looking to make money, sure. but cover yeah. the expenses. Right. Terry knows that. So that's what, that's what, I, that's what I've actually put in place and this board knows about it. All right. And we raised that, we, we, were, we were united on that, on that front. Yeah, it shouldn't front. cost the taxpayers it shouldn't cost, No, it shouldn't, especially when the there's a profit. The benefit we get is that they see our village, that's it. Right, especially when there's a profit made. Hmm? Yeah, so, absolutely, I agree, thanks. When there's a profit made. Hmm? So I, I appreciate Jim, thank you very much for that information. Thanks. And I'll look into the dog thing, I'm not totally sure on that yet, but I'll, I'll look into it. I'll, it's a tricky one. I love dogs, so. <laughs> you know, I, I remember at some point in the past, there was some policy adopted with respect to the street fair and dogs. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it's going by the wayside or what's occurred. I, I, I think that's correct, yeah. No dogs um, allowed, right? Because yeah. there was some issue with respect to that. Um, you know, some dogs behave well. Some dogs, like my dog, goes crazy when he sees people. So, um, yeah. I there's lick a lot, lick there is lick a lot death, of but, people. Uh, there yeah, I will look into that. For, what, for whatever it's worth, I, I, as you know, I was there for a bit, and I actually really enjoyed uh, being able to pet and see dogs randomly on the street that were with their owners. Every dog I saw was well behaved. So, I mean, I think it should. If we do anything personally, I think it should be about dogs that aren't well behaved. You know. Yeah, but you can't identify that until it happens. That's the problem. I'm with you, Steve. I love dogs. It only takes one. Yeah. I want everybody to write this down because Jim and I are on the same page. This may never have happened before. <laughs> what, what's today's date? <laughs> Maybe once. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Bruce Simon representing the Village of Suffering Community Foundation. There is so much to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about, because I always forget it, and shame on me. One of the things the Village of Southern Community Foundation does every year is the Spirit Awards. We give, we give a cash award to graduates of schools in the area. And that is something that Kathy Mills and Fred Rella have taken over and have shepherded for, I don't even know how many years at this point. And every year the, the kids that we give to are really appreciative and every year the families are appreciative. So I want everybody to know that that's Kathy and Fred who take care of that every year. So they, they deserve the credit for that. Thank you. Uh, by the way, as of right now, we have one award for this year. We still have time. So parents, school administrators, get your kids in. Uh, second thing, for not just Battery Saturday, the, the list of thank yous is very long. I'll start with the Village Board for approving it, and then for all of you for coming out and supporting it in whatever way you did. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I think the mayor is still downstairs talking to cars as they drive in. <laughs> that was a good thing. <laughs> yes, Michael, I'm talking about you. I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. I said, I think you're still downstairs talking to cars as they pull in. I was. Talking to the drivers. Right. Um, the, you guys support us every year, and it's, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you, of course, to the residents of Suffern and the surrounding area for coming out and giving us all the stuff that shouldn't go in the garbage. <laughs> The, to me, the math is very simple on this. Nobody wants to drive to Pomona to the household hazardous waste facility for one battery. If the 11,000 people in this village all put one battery in the garbage, we've got a, a, an environmental nightmare. That's why we do what we do. It started out as not just Battery Saturday, it's advanced to paints and medications and everything. Uh, this year we didn't do medications because it was DEA Take Back Drugs Day. The Suffering Police and a bunch of other folks, and I did want to appreciate that and say thank you to the Chief and the Lieutenant for your officer for being out there. He was wonderful. But the biggest thank you I'm reserving is for the CSEA members of the Street and Refuse Department, who time and again volunteer their time, never ask anything. Not only do they not ask for anything, they refuse my offers of hospitality. I can't even buy these gentlemen a cup of coffee. That goes a long way to telling you who they are and the kind of men they are and what they do and the commitment they have to this village. So if you've never done it before, and I know you had a, a round of applause for them, I would ask you to give another round of applause to the CSEA members who came out every time. <laughs> and one of them is patting himself on the back back there, so he'll be out on a rotator cuff injury next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
It went so well. We've collected pallets and pallets, and I'll let Joe Hunt give the exact counts because I've lost all track of it. I think it was six pallets of paint, TVs, a bunch of containers of batteries. Like I said, I'll let him give the numbers because he's much better at it. It went so well that people have already asked me when the next one is. I don't have a date for you yet. Next meeting, hopefully. But thank you again, board. Thanks thank for, you, everybody, thank for coming Thank you for out. everything. Yeah. It was excellent. Bruce, because they didn't want coffee. They wanted beer and bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. They waited, <laughs> they waited <laughs> till <laughs> Sunday. <for the> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other comments from the public? <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing, please. Trust, oh, Trustee Corrigan. <laughs> motion made by Trustee Corrigan. Second, Second by, Second Trustee, by Hagen. Trustee Hagen. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? This motion passes. Uh, now we will go to the trustees. The trustees have any comments? I just no. have. Well, you want you want to go, Joe? Okay. No, I'm good. I just want to say everything Bruce said, and those two guys that are walking out in the back, to Patrick, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we'll do that for you. You don't have to do it. You don't have. But they were fantastic. Everybody did a great job, but they really went above and beyond. Yeah, it was, it was mean, a fantastic day. We can't thank you enough. Maybe what we could do, Mayor, you might agree, next time we do it next year, there were certain things that people brought that they could have put in regular garbage, Maybe we could say that in a flyer. The empty paint cans, all that extra. What do you think of that, Patrick? Good idea? Not have them do it that day? Pat's a man a few words. You gotta remember that, sir. I'm, you're not kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> Any other comments or anyone else? Uh, okay. Uh, Go on to the, the mayor's update. I mentioned the great job the fire department did, the fire. And uh, I think uh, I think I'm I think I'm good on that. I think we'll uh, move on. We're now going to go to uh, I'm going to have to make a motion to go into uh, executive session. You got to do the uh, retirement. Oh, the number one yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to do that later. Okay, I'll do that first. Look, I'm going to do an 11B, a resolution adopting. I have a resolution adopting the record of activities for elected and appointed officials, whereas the Office of New York State Controller requires that the governing body establish the standard work day for reporting days worked to the New York State and local employees' retirement system based on the timekeeping system for the record of activities maintained and submitted by these members to the clerk of this body. And whereas New York State and local employees retirement system regulation for reporting time for elected appointed officials, section 315.4, record of activities, B5, completion of the standard work day and reporting resolutions prescribed as a standard work day for elected appointed officials equal to no fewer than six hours and no more than eight hours for each such elected appointed office or position for the purpose of calculating day work for those who are enrolled in the New York State employees and local employee retirement system. And whereas officials who begin a new or subsequent term of office are required to complete a three months record of activities, ROA, ROA within 150 days at the start of the term and submitted to the secretary or clerk of the governing body within 30 days of completion. And whereas a summary of the three month record of activities submitted by Village of Suffolk officials has been summarized on New York State and local retirement system standard work day and report resolution form RS 2417-A slash B. Therefore be it resolved that the Village of Suffolk Board of Trustees adopt the records of activities as presented on form RS 2417-A slash B and authorize the Village Clerk to post form RS 2417-A slash B for at least 30 days on the Village of Suffolk website. The bulletin board at the entrance of the Village of Suffolk is 6 and Washington Avenue, Suffolk, New York and the entrance of the Office of the Village Clerk in accordance with the requirements of the public notice established by the New York State and local retirement system. Can I please have a motion to uh, approve the foregoing re resolution, please? Trustee Corrigan. Motion made by Trustee Corrigan. Can I get a second, please? Second, second. Trustee Albert. Second by Trustee Albert. All in favor? Aye. 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 Only opposed? Motion passes. Um, 
I now will make a motion to go into executive session for litigation. It could take us. We did that in the consent agenda, Jim. Yep, did that in the consent agenda. No, I didn't, I didn't forget him. He wouldn't let me forget him. You can't okay? forget him. Right. There's no gonna, forgetting Mike Janito. He's in no. the house. We're, 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 we're going to go into all the items on the agenda or, or done. We're going to go into executive uh, session now. Uh, we'll make a motion and then we'll come out of it and then close the meetings. We will not be taking any votes after that. No okay? There would be no uh, just things we have to do about a, 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 lit a lit legal case, a litigation case. So I'd like to make a motion to go out to uh, I so move. Litigation? Trustees. Second. Trustee Solomon makes a motion. Yes. Second Trustee by Trustee Hagen. Hagen. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, folks. We will be back, but we will we will not vote on anything tonight. How you doing? We just came back from the executive session. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to close executive session. Motion. Okay. Motion made by Sorry. Trustee Albert, seconded by Trustee Corrigan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? None. Motion passes. I'd like to make a motion now to close the close the meeting. Motion. Motion made by Frank Hagan, seconded by Trustee Silverman. That's right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Have a nice day, folks.